Hi, it's Eric. This video is to give you a brief intro about what dynamic blocks are and then show you how to create a dynamic block using the new AviCAD 2025. To first show you what a dynamic block is, I brought in an AutoCAD dynamic block and AviCAD will import those. I just simply copied and pasted this in from AutoCAD. So let's click on it. And as you can see here, we have some grips, actually three of them. This one here is really just for moving the symbol around, but this one here actually flips the block around in the opposite direction. And this one here allows you to rotate just the shaded part of the block, leaving the annotation in the circle alone. Quite useful because without it, you'd have to have four blocks or more doing the same functionality as this one dynamic block. Today, I wanted to show you another example of a way you might use a dynamic block. And creating these dynamic blocks is something brand new inside AviCAD 2025. Here I have a plan view and an elevation view of a PVC valve. I've already created this into a block, but this one is just a series of lines and arcs. So let's go ahead and just save this to a block. So we'll select it by area, and then we will type B for block, and then we'll give it a name. I'm just going to call this valve side view. And it's asking me for a base point. And I'm just going to type in M2P for mid between two points. And I'm just going to give it two points here. Then what I can do is double click on this block. And by doing so, it activates the block editor. And choose OK. And here you can see my insert point here that I created earlier. So there's a couple of things I wanted to show you with this block here. We're going to scale it using grips. And then I'll also show you how to turn off and turn on the visibility between the elevation view and the plan view of this block. So up here in the ribbon, you'll notice a couple of new options. In most cases, you're going to need to start with a parameter and then assign it an action. So the parameters is the one here on this side and the action is on this side. Over here to the right, we have a visibility states, which we'll be using to toggle between the two views of the block. So let's start out with the parameter. We'll select linear. We're going to start off with the center of the block here. Let's type the M2P command again, and we'll just choose this and this. Then it wants the endpoint, and we'll just place it here on the side of our block, and then locate this parameter like so. We'll enter in one for the number of grips. Instead of having a grip here in the middle, we'll just have one grip here on the outside. This yellow symbol here is saying that we don't have an action assigned to this parameter. So the next step is to find an action that we want. And in our case, we want scale. So if you look at your command prompt, it will say select parameter. So we just simply select the parameter. Again, looking at the command line, it wants the selection set for the action. So the selection set is going to be the entire block. And then once we have that defined, we just press enter. Notice the little yellow symbol has gone away now that we have an action assigned to that. So let's just close this block editor now and look at the block in model space. So here's the grip that we assigned here. And you can see here that it's referencing the midpoint of the block. And by pulling it out, you can see that we can scale it in and out. We could also type a value in here if we wanted to. So I wanted to incorporate this block with this block so that we can toggle between the two states. Let me show you how to do that. Select this and we'll come up and we'll choose copy with a base point. So we're just going to copy it from this base point here. And let's go back into the block editor here. We'll just double click on it and we'll choose OK. And now what we can do is assign a parameter to this block. So we'll click here. We'll go down to the visibility parameter here. 
And again, we're just reading our command line, specify the location for the parameter. We put that up here somewhere. We'll just choose one grip here for that. The other thing we could do is we could click on this and then go over to our properties palette and give it a new name. I'm just going to give it the name side view. You can see it's changed it there. Then if we come up here into the ribbon again and click on visibility states, you'll be able to see this state here. We can just rename this to the same as the other. Now, if we come up here to the right, we can give it a new visibility state. So we'll just select new here. And for this one, it's going to be top view. Now, because the side view and the top view are completely different blocks, we want to hide all the existing entities or these entities that you see behind the window here. So we choose this one. As you can see, the visibility of that valve just disappeared based on what we just did. So now we have the top view here showing. We can toggle to the side view to see what we just turned off. So let's toggle to the top view. And now we can paste that block that we copied into our clipboard. So let's go ahead and come up here and we'll say paste. Because we copied it with a base point, it's coming in with that same base point. We want to move it to the coordinate here, which is zero, zero. So, so now we need to explode the block. And I just realized I really should just name this views because when you click on it, you're going to see these two options here. It needs to be the parent name of these views here. Let's also allow the scaling of this block as well. So we need to come over and assign it a parameter of linear, just like before. We'll give it one grip and then we'll give it an action of scale. And we select the parameter and then we select the block itself and we press enter. So let's have a look at our block again. So we can really get rid of this block here because this is the one we incorporate into the other. We'll click on this one and here you can see this little arrow with the line on top is our visibility states. So if I wanted to see the top view of this block, I would just click this. And then to see the side view, I'd click this. So again, we can scale this block just like the other one in the same way. As you can see, you can do a lot of things with dynamic blocks. This is just really one example. If you have any questions, feel free to call 888-271-7121 or you can reach me on catavenue.com forward slash support.